I just got beta access to a long-awaited AI tool. You guessed it, LTX Studio. Let's go. Okay, maybe you actually didn't guess it, and maybe you think I'm lying about the hype. There's also a chance that you found that crowd in Song Annoying, but I have proof. Because out of the 736 approximate users who were online at the time, that is a lot of Discord responses. I mean, look at all of those. There's, there's a ton, of, maybe unprecedented amount of Discord responses right there. And to be honest, they claim to include a lot in this one tool. And I think that has played into the hype a ton because they are literally claiming to do what a bunch of tools do separately together in one place. And I mean, that's crazy. Like that would be crazy. And that's exactly why I was asked to do this review. So let's dive into it. All right, so this is LTX Studio beta. I will say that this is a beta as a disclaimer, so all the testing I'm gonna be doing here, just know that it's still in beta and there's gonna be a lot of improvements down the road to come, but very excited to get ready and start this. So as you can see from the interface, it actually, it's really a really clean interface. Um, there's a little welcome, little quote for your projects will go, and then there's some suggestions of how to start a project, but you start by typing your film idea or a full synopsis into that text box. I think I'm actually gonna go with one of these suggestions, so let's filter through those until we get something we wanna see. All right, so this one looks interesting as a good test, so we'll select that one, and we'll click Next. All right, so we're getting some loading here. I have not tested this at all, so this is my first time seeing all of this. All right, so we've got a full story overview of what the story will be about two characters and then some project settings on the left side here this is a very interesting interface very cool way for them to do this so it looks like there's a few visual aesthetics to choose from actually there's a lot of visual aesthetics to choose from like that slider is very small there's a lot of options here we'll go ahead and stick with cinematic for this time there's also some different aspect ratios uh looks like you can actually do some editing to the characters so Okay, so you can actually do like a face swap here. That's pretty cool. You can see that would be very useful. Uh, there's some editing, so the actual appearance of the character, um, including their clothing, and it looks like a voice change as well. Let's actually make some changes here just to see what it'll do. We'll make these blue eyes, and we'll change the hair to blonde. I think we'll also maybe change the shirt. Let's go with orange and just pretty similar to what it was, see what it does. Okay, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive, very cool. All right, so let's go on to the next step by hitting start. Okay, so this is what happened when it finished loading. So it's actually broken everything out into individual scenes and different frames from each of these scenes all the way through the end of the story, it looks like. So we've got the actual location, some different things about the lighting and the weather. Looks like there's some sound from the scenes. We can add scene sound, the voiceover. I can't actually click into that, but it looks like there's a voiceover for some portion of the scene. The characters throughout look pretty similar to the seed characters that we saw in the original screen when we're creating this project, um, though there is Obviously a bit of variation. Yeah, so there's quite a bit of variation with the characters, uh, especially the captain. Okay, so looking at the individual frames themselves, looks like we can actually switch around where the frames go and add frames. Also determine the type of shot it is, add any SFX and change the motion scale. So let's actually go in and edit one of these and see what happens when we do that. Let's start by changing this first shot. So they've actually got some shot options. Do a bird's eye view. I'm gonna change a little bit about what this says about the plane. Okay, so change some things there. It's actually pretty responsive to these changes. Uh, the renderings aren't perfect, but that's to be ex uh, expected with these AI tools occasionally. I'm interested to see what happens when we generate the video, but let's do a few more tests here. Um, if we actually change the entire location or the actual full lighting, so let's let's try that. Make it all midnight. This should change all of the frames. Okay, so the first frame, because we have it 
just explicitly said Midnight seems to have responded better than these last two. It's an interesting feature, but it looks like that it's going to be, it's going to need some more tuning in the future. Let's try messing with the weather. Okay, that one worked actually very well. You can see the entirety has changed and there you can see the little flecks from the rain and the water on the ground in some of these images. That looks really good. All right, let's test some of these scene sound and SFX. Let's see what we can do with these. So scene sound, write some text. So let's see, the um, airplane engines. So it actually is playing some sound and it actually sounded like an engine starting up. It's not that it actually sounded like an airplane engine, um, but that's pretty good for an AI tool to be able to have all of these things in one place. And these SFX ones are, I imagine, doing uh, something very similar. Yeah, those are actually pretty good, pretty good SFX. All right, let's try actually generating a video from this new film. Uh, we'll actually start with this first one. All right. Let's watch that back again. Pretty on par with a lot of generation tools. Let's see what happens when we do the shot editor. Okay, this just looks like a different view that has given us some more options for this actual shot. So we can do things to the camera motion that I did not see in the previous screen. So we've got scene, natural extreme, and custom camera motion, and a scale, a seed, some advanced settings for intensity, frames per second, and duration. This is very cool. Let's try custom motion, and orbit sounds cool, so we'll try that. Make it four seconds, and we'll leave everything else the same. Let's see what it comes up with. Looks like up here that you can actually use this to switch between the two views. I think that this is actually very well designed. Again, talking about the UI a little bit, I think it's very well designed. And I actually really like both screens for what they let you see about the overall story. I think that this is going to be very useful for people, even with just the minimal time that I've spent using it now. Even if you're not using necessarily every piece of it, it helps to get the whole thing actually brainstormed and I think that as they keep moving with the tool, the generations will get even better. And having this much control over all of the frames at the same time is really powerful. Okay, so that generation is done. Let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, so it appears that it has not done much with the orbit. I think it is possible that I misunderstood this angle. Apparently there's an actual full thing where you can choose in a semi 3D environment how the orbit is handled. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and switch this to something more simple. I'd have to probably play with that a little bit more by myself before, before actually explaining it in a video. Let's just do a pan left and see what that does for us. Okay, so we've got that generation, see what we've got here. There we go, yeah, so there's that movement. Looking at it, uh, it's doing a pretty good job with object preservation, which is a big thing for me. Um, there is a little bit of a distortion morphing here, but that's something that, you know, in all these tools, you sometimes have to re-roll to get what you're exactly looking for. It's, it's really not that bad. Okay, so before we try and turn this into an actual movie by exporting the different scenes, let's take a look at this small menu up here and some other things about this editor that I have noticed so far. Project settings lets you go back and change the cinematic inspiration and the visual aesthetic from the earlier menu. There's also a soundtrack where you can update or upload your own or describe something for it to generate. You can also go back, change the characters, edit the characters, and finally look at the voiceover if you're going to have one, the character who's going to be doing it, or a narrator, and you can choose from uh, quite a few different narrators. There's also a way to add scenes. If you click in here, you can add the scene, describe the location, lighting, all the things that we have. All right, so let's try and preview and export using this button here to see the final results of one of these. We haven't done too much tweaking, so it'll be kind of a raw look at what it will generate without too much tweaking. Obviously, when you do your own projects, you want to do more to adjust it to what you specifically want. So we'll click preview and export, standard quality, there's going to be an upscaling soon, which will be cool. And then click render. 
and you'll be added to the queue. And I will resume the video once this is done. Okay, so it is done loading. We got this little download button. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to the actual video and we can take a look at it. I never imagined a routine business trip would turn into a fight for survival. When the plane went down, it was just me and Captain Roberts, two strangers brought together by fate. We battled injuries and the elements, forging an unlikely bond as we clung to hope. Days blurred into nights as we struggled to stay alive. And just when we thought we were at the end of our strength, a beacon of hope appeared in the form of a rescue helicopter. As we were airlifted to safety, I realized the true power of human connection. Our ordeal may be over, but the bond forged in those woods will last a lifetime. Alright, so after watching the video, the quality is pretty good. The sound quality is not that great, but I'm sure that that will improve over time. Obviously, there was not much tuning done to this, so you'd have to do more to get the characters more consistent throughout the video. Some of the movement was actually pretty good and impressive, and the voiceover was actually pretty good as well. So there's a lot about this tool that's promising and to look forward to in the future. Definitely encourage you to try it out if you can get beta access to it, and look for more drops from the LTX team with more updates to this tool, which I think will be even more powerful in the future. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.